every day a person need to consume something in order to live on. It can be food and beverage, electronical stuff, or others. But have you ever wondered that the waste from your daily consumption can be used to make a macro flash diffuser? My name is Rico and in today's video, I will show you exactly how you can turn your garbage into a macro diffuser. But before we jump right to the making process of the flash diffuser, let's talk a bit about what is flash diffuser and why it is needed in macro photography. So a flash diffuser is basically something that you put on your external flash in order to diffuse the light that comes from the flash to create a softer light. This thing is very important because the object in macro photography only inches away from the lens. Because of that, if you use an external flash without a diffuser, it will produce a harsh light to the object, which is not good. And in order to help you know the difference between using a diffuser and without, let's take a look at these two photos. As you can see, the photo on the left side is darker because the light that comes from the flash didn't reach the object due to the distance from our lens to the object. But if you compare it to the photo on the right side, it is definitely brighter and softer, which makes the appearance of our objects more defined. Now, Let's take a look at some things that we need to prepare to make a macro diffuser. First, we have a milk box. Second, we have another box that usually used for shipping. Then we have instant noodle package. This is the one with a reflective material inside. But if you don't have one, don't worry, you can also purchase a reflective paper on your local stationery stores. Next, I have also prepared some foam sheets that you can often find when you purchase tempered glass, phone cases, or others. I have also heard of other material that can be used for the front element. If I'm not wrong, it is translucent plastic. And for the tools that is needed to build our macro diffuser, we need cutter and scissors, hot glue gun, and transparent tape. Okay, so let's start making the diffusers. First thing I will do is cut the milk box. The reason why I use this is that the milk box is not heavy, yet it is sturdy and also have a reflective component inside, which will really help the light to spread inside the diffuser. Okay, I will speed up the video because it takes quite long to cut this box. Next, we have to choose only one side, either the front or the back, and cut along the line and leave about 3 to 5 cm left. I do this to tilt the side of the box that being cut so we can turn the flashlight to hit directly to the object that is only inches away from our lens. Then, cut the left and the right side of the box diagonally to avoid us making a flash diffuser that is too stiff. After we finish cutting the milk box, let's proceed to the next material, which is the shipping box. We will use the shipping box as an extension that connects the upper and the lower side of our flash diffuser. And don't forget, because the box doesn't have a reflective material, we will use the instant noodle packaging that we have prepared before and stick it to the box using a hot glue gun. Then, by looking back to the milk box that we have changed before, we can sketch the back of the shipping box and cut throughout the line so we can stick it together with the milk box and close both sides of the diffuser. So now we are only two steps away to make our own macro flash diffuser. The thing we need to do to complete our diffuser are sticking the front element, which is using the foam sheets. And the last, 
cut a rubber bracelet and make two or four holes. If you use only one bracelet, then make two holes, and if you use two, then make four holes. I will also speed up this part. Yeah, so we have done making the macro flash diffuser. From the look, it is not very appealing. But let's see what do you guys think about the results that comes from this diffuser. Yep, so I will show you some photos that is taken with my Canon EOS 77D paired with the Lawa 100mm macro and of course my DIY flash diffuser. In order to make this diffuser, I have experimented at least 7 times changing the construction the materials and others and still this is the best from all the users that I have made if you take a closer look to this little spider the shadow is very soft and the light also spray throughout the image and the same goes for this cute jumping spider a jumping spider is a great example to test out how good our lighting setup because some species, like the one that you see right now, got a reflective legs. So the more softer the light on both their legs and eyes, the better. But I also find in some cases, where you get too far from the object, the light didn't hit the object properly. It is probably caused by the size of the diffuser that is too small for a bigger object. But, as long as you take photos of smaller specimens, like the jumping spider, leaf harbor, and others, you will find it is pleasing to use this diffuser. Yep, so that's all from me. I really hope you find this video helpful, especially if you plan to build a macro flash diffuser. For those of you who love macro photography, go check my Instagram at Rico underscore Reyes. and maybe if you do like travel photos you can also visit my second Instagram account at discoveryco don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe got any suggestion for next video write it down on the comment section below thanks for watching I will see you on the next video